Have you ever wondered what it might be like or how MVC might support you when you're feeling depressed? Hello, I'm Shanti Garber and welcome to MVC Life Hacks. This time we're exploring how MVC might support you to uh, come back to life, to find a way to come back to life, to, to reconnect with life when you're feeling depressed. To explore this topic further, I talked to Michael Zutz, who is an MVC participant from Austria. Here's the interview. So I'm wondering if, the, if, the, if how we educate ourselves is anything to do with you know, feeling depressed. You know, uh, um, and, and that's what I'd like to explore today, how we educate ourselves, and if that, if that, if that is leading to people uh, feeling depressed. Yeah. In the USA, 13% of adults um, that's, and it's higher among uh, women than men. 13% of, of adults uh, use antidepressants. And in the UK, it, uh, the figure is actually 17%. And I just wonder what comes up for you when you hear that. Yeah, so uh, personally, I'm also taking antidepressants. So um, yeah, I guess I'm not really surprised as I've, uh, when I talk to my friends, people, uh, many people tell me that they have um phases in their life in their daily lives where they feel depressed and where they where they where they can't get out of bed or when they can't get themselves to do things and yeah and i have experienced the same yeah mm -hmm. so you're not surprised because it's it happens to you and also you you know from your friends that they also have times when, when they really struggle with life exactly exactly yeah depression is one of anger's cousins along with guilt and shame. So um, anger tends to be um, outward, uh, expressed outwardly, it tends to be it rise up and express comes out. Whereas guilt and shame and depression tend to be when that kind of judging and blaming is turned in, uh, when it's kind of repressed, when the anger is repressed and turned in on ourselves, then it becomes guilt or shame or depression. And depression is really that heavy, that really heavy sinking, kind of uh, feelings in the body is that is that does that kind of sound familiar to you is that yes very yeah, it just <laughs> it resonates a lot with me when you say that so I want, I want to find out how to connect with the needs behind these these different emotions trying to connect with our needs when we're feeling depressed it might it might occasion it might bring about some mourning there might be some mourning there some sense of uh, acknowledging that some needs certain needs haven't been met for a long time so, so I also want to talk a bit about mourning and uh, the importance of, of mourning. Because if, if, if we know how to mourn, then we're unlikely to feel depressed in the same kind of way, at least not for as long or as deeply. So mourning is a human need just as much as celebrating life. So what I mean is by mourning and celebration, I mean mourning is when needs are not met, when things aren't going well and celebrating Celebration is when things are going well and needs are met. So they're really two sides of the, the same coin. That's, that's, that's how I understand it. So mourning on one side, celebrating on the other. We need both. I think I'm personally not really a, a good mourner. <laughs> so I would say like I, I personally, I don't mourn a lot or I, I, don't, I don't have the, the, the habit or, or the, the uh, I don't do it often. Maybe I wasn't taught or... Mm. Um, I, I don't do it. I don't do it often. I don't do it well. Probably when I think about children, um, I find that they uh, they are good at mourning. So they they express their feelings. They express anger, sadness, and shame. They feel everything, and I think that that's uh, that's maybe a, a reason why they don't get depressed. Because I don't. I mean, probably there are children who get depressed, but not. It's not often the case. And I guess it's because they, they know how to express themselves and how to uh, how to um, express their emotions, also mourning, mm -hmm. um, sadness, expressing their pain. Even if we know that we need to be connected with our lives and with our needs, it's not necessarily that easy uh, to, to, to come in touch with, with our needs. And if you ask someone who's, who's feeling depressed, um, you know, what needs 
are they are they uh, are not being met at the moment? Well, they 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 tend to say things like, "Oh well, uh, there must be something wrong with me," or or it's always like this, or it's always going to be like this, or I'm a poor mother, or well, my 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 brother is such and such, you know, and he and but me, I'm just you know, or I'm the bad guy, you know, I can't change, you know, uh, and it's wrong to get angry about it anyway. So these, do, so does does any of that ring true to for you? And does it, you know? Yeah, I guess that, that really, really sounds familiar for me. I think I, mm, I when, when I was depressed, I remember um, one time coming off the antidepressant. Oh. And uh, so I, I wanted to really rush it and, and, you know, be healthy again. And it was after I had done some therapy. Yeah. But I still, I think I, I remember I still I had, I had a very high ideal of myself that I had to fulfill and and i and i i wanted to fulfill this ideal and i and my my thought about the depression was that there was something wrong with me basically so that there was like um because i had looked into psychology and they all people talk about mindsets and and yeah cognition and and such things and i thought like my cognition is wrong so i there is something like here that needs to to be right. fixed <laughs> and yeah. then it's like you're, you're a machine and exactly. it's broken. It's, it's yeah. kind of a broken machine analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now I would say that the problem was more here. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all it really takes to get depressed is to have certain thoughts about, you know, well, you, you mentioned, you know, have a perfect, an ideal of yourself, or so you, you know, what you should be achieving or, exactly. you know, what you should be and so forth. I really like a, a little story that uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist teacher of Thich Nhat Hanh tells um, in, a, in a book called Peace is Every Step, where he says, well, if your lettuce doesn't grow, if it doesn't grow well, well, you don't blame the lettuce. <laughs> yeah. You look for reasons why the lettuce isn't growing well. You know, you look at whether it's getting enough water or the quality of the soil or if you're getting enough sunlight or you know you look for the reasons the causes the, the you know the, the conditions for for lettuce growing well you, however you know if we have problems with our friends or, or, or our family we tend to blame the other person much more quickly or and even ourselves you know if, if we have problems we tend to blame ourselves much more quickly than we do lettuce so uh, even though we're kind of dimly aware that blaming has no positive effect on the other people or on us, nor does using reason or arguments, you know, in the case of other people or in the case of ourselves, that doesn't have much effect either. And I'd like to suggest that empathy is one of those really important causes, so, so that if we, if we can understand other people, and even if we can understand ourselves, uh, then we can love. We can love, a, love other people, we can love ourselves. And, uh, you know, like the lettuce, if we, if we can give the lettuce that kind of nourishment, then the lettuce will grow and the situation will change. Yeah. Uh, how does that sound to you? Yeah, I think I, I, I like the, the, the image, the, the, the image about lettuce that doesn't grow when you, or that doesn't help, doesn't help to, 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 to shame or bully the lettuce, <laughs> it won't do any good. And um, I, I like this, this, this way of thinking that, that especially when someone is in depression or uh, yeah, when, when someone is in depression, because that I've also heard of uh, behavior where people would say, you know, someone gets depressed and they say to them, well, you just got to snap out of it. You just got to go for some more sunlight, you know, and, and got to go for walks and, and maybe meet your friends and, and don't be so, so don't fuss about it, you know. Um, and, and this, this can really, I guess that, that this can really contribute. So the way that I see it now um, is, is that from what I have learned from you, is that this can really contribute to the to the dynamic of the depression because I I, I, I will shame and blame myself even more, yeah. and and then I and then yeah there, 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 there's no way forward you know it's it's not it's not gonna do any good mm -hmm. it's just gonna keep me stuck 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. So understanding is key. Understanding and acknowledging what's going on. Yeah, the, the big learning, uh, and I think that's, that's the big learning that NBC brought to me, is don't stop uh, with the judging and blaming. Don't end there, you know, yeah, go, yeah. go deeper and, yeah. and go to your needs and, 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 and see or express or uh, acknowledge what you're feeling at the moment, what you're needing uh, and take a step forward, you know. Okay, thank you very much for joining me, Mikhail. Yeah. Pleasure. Okay. So if that's touched a chord and you or someone you know needs support, we signposted some free services in the description below. And of course, we're available for one-to-one -one sessions. That's it for now. If you'd like to know more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can like our Facebook page. You can sign up for our mailer. And of course, you can join us at one of our events.